Hey everyone, it's Jared from One Earth Mushrooms. Today we're going to be preparing and sterilizing rye grain so that we can create grain spawn for our next mushroom project. Let's get right into it. The items that you'll need for rye grain spawn are obviously rye grain, some scales, a bucket, a mixing spoon, a thermometer, some gypsum powder, a pressure cooker, some sort of colander, jars that have a vented lid on them, aluminum foil, and optional vinegar. I'll tell you why later. So weigh out the desired amount of grain that you want. You'll want to use about 90 grams of dry rye grain per one pint jar that you plan on building. So if you're doing half pint jars, that would be 45 grams of dry rye grain. The next step is to wash the rye grain. And you do that by just running cold water over the grain, mixing it around with your hands, and pouring off the dust and silt and stems and leaves and whatever is in your grain until the water runs mostly clear. It doesn't need to be perfect. As you can see, my sterilizer bucket gets quite a bit of use, not just for sterilizing, but also for whatever else I find it useful for. I rinsed my grain three times and it wasn't perfectly clean at the end, but it was good enough. The next step is to heat up water to no greater than 170 degrees. And you're gonna to wanna to heat enough water to cover your rye grain by about three to four inches. You wanna have a pretty good cover of water on top of your rye grain. I ended up heating to just below 160 for mine. Pour the hot water into your rye grain bucket. Give it a little mix. And I'm adding 2% gypsum powder. So 2% of the total grain weight that I use is 14.4 grams. This is where I use my 10th gram scale. It comes in really handy here. Make sure you tear it out for your container and then add your gypsum powder to the scale to the desired weight. And I went 0.1 grams over. I'm not too concerned about that. Add the gypsum powder to your water and rye grain mix. Give it a quick stir. Put a lid on your container. If you don't have a lid, just cover it with saran wrap. And then we're gonna let it soak for 12 to 24 hours. I let mine go until I woke up the next morning and it ended up being almost 20 hours. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you take the lid off is it's gonna smell bad. Any bacteria, yeast, or spores that were in your rye grain had a chance to germinate overnight and the smell is not very pleasant. So just be aware of that. If you live with other people, I don't recommend doing the step of boiling your rye grain in the house because it will make your entire house smell bad. So if you have a way to do it outside or in the garage, I recommend that. If not, just open your windows and start a fan in the house.
pour all of your rye grain and water mix into a pot that you can boil in. No need to change out the water here. In fact, you want to keep the same water that you soaked it in. That way the gypsum powder stays with your grains. And just like that, it's boiling, thanks to the magic of editing. And we're gonna let it boil for 10 minutes. You just want a low simmer. It doesn't need to be a violent boil. Turn your heat source off. Use your colander to strain off the water. And we're gonna let this sit for about 30 minutes to fully drain. At this point, it smells a lot better. You've killed off all of the bacteria and yeast and spores that started getting excited overnight in the warm water. So by this point, it actually smells like if you were brewing beer or a little bit like baking bread. Give it a good shake. Try to get most of the water out. And then, like I said, just let it sit for about 30 minutes. Grab a couple pans and we're gonna dry out the surface of our grains. So dump the grain out onto a pan. The silpat mats that you see here are definitely not required. Spread the grain around fairly evenly across the surface. And here's what the grain should look like at this point, just for your awareness. The grain shouldn't be exploded. You might find a few kernels that are broken apart. But let it dry for about an hour. And then I just scraped them all into a bowl so that I could easily use them later. For this one, I'm using four one-pint jars with only a vent hole installed. I'll be using a wedge of agar with lion's mane grown on it to inoculate these, so I don't need any self-healing injection ports for injecting spores into the grain. So here I'm adding about one and a quarter cups of my soaked and boiled grain and that's going to make it about 75 to 85 percent full if you're interested in how to build these caps i have a video on how i built my caps including self-healing injection ports for different kind of grow projects. And you can find that on my channel. Cover the caps of your jars with aluminum foil. This will prevent water from entering the jars when you are sterilizing them in your pressure cooker. We want our grain to be just as moist as it is right now without adding more moisture during the pressure cooking process. You'll want to establish somewhat of a seal with the aluminum foil over the lids. 
But it doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. Now the fun part. We get to pressure cook our jars for 90 minutes. One and a half hours. Place a trivet in the bottom of the pressure cooker. And that's going to prevent your cans from breaking. I add two teaspoons of vinegar, and this is going to prevent staining on your jars. And this is not a necessary step, but it is something that I like to do. And I cheated a little bit here. I heated up about a liter of water in my tea kettle. I didn't bring it up to boiling, just below boiling, and I dumped that in to kind of speed things along. Install your cover and the rocker weight. Turn on the heat and allow the pressure to build to 15 pounds. When the pressure gets to 15 pounds, you should see your rocker weight start to rock and you'll see your gauge indicating 15 pounds. Once you get to 15 pounds, Start your timer for one hour and 30 minutes. And you're gonna to wanna to turn down the heat just a little bit so that you're not losing water through the rocker weight the entire time. After an hour and 30 minutes, you can turn off your pressure cooker, unplug it. And then I like to put a blanket over the top so that as it cools, it's not sucking contamination into the pressure cooker. Now, I don't know if this step is entirely necessary, but I spray it with isopropyl alcohol. And my theory is that it will kill anything that's already in my clean cloth. I allowed the pressure cooker to cool to ambient before I pulled my towel off the top and started removing jars from the pressure cooker. They honestly don't look much different than when we put them in, but we know that anything that was inside the jars is now dead. And all we have left is pure sterilized rye grain that's ready for our spores as soon as we put them in. Man, what a fun project that was. I really enjoyed making the sterilized rye grain. Looking forward to inoculating it. I'll probably do that tonight after the kids go to bed or get up early in the morning. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for the latest videos as they come out. I'll be releasing videos every three days, and I hope you can join me on my journey of exploration and education into the wide world of growing mushrooms. I'll see you next time. Thanks.